Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. I have a graphics card here. This belongs to a, a couple of guys who were running a, a Bitcoin type mining operation in the capital of the island, uh, Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. And they actually brought me a few uh, GPUs to look at. This is the fourth one of theirs I'm looking at. Uh, one we couldn't repair. Uh, basically, it had a faulty GPU. Another one is waiting for some parts. Uh, another one needs two uh, video RAM chips, and I'm waiting for a reply if they want to pay for them. And this is number four. And there's one more. So, this is a GTX 2080. Uh, they said it started artifacting, then it went dead, and that there are some broken ferrets on the 12 volt which I'm guessing because they uh, were watching the channel and looking to repair these and then decided that they weren't at that level just yet. So this is the card, obviously they've been working on it, the fans unplugged. Uh, let's, um, yeah, let's get these apart. Um, I'm just looking at them, I'm just noting before taking it apart that which is quite common, it seems, that the board has warped down towards this end. I and mean, it's quite warped, actually, that one is. It's noticeably warped. Oh, this side. Not so bad, and this is slightly warped anyway, but definitely that is well warped over here. Whether that's something to do with how they've put it back together, I don't know. So let's take it apart and let's see what we've got. Here we have it. So there's a bit of you know, it's very dry heat sink compound on it. It's really is dry. Um, we have, it looks like, yeah, it looks like there's a, a thermal pad missing from here, which if I just put it the way round that matches the board, yeah. And if I just put this this way up, so this is where this came off from, straight into the direction it was on the board, yeah, this way. Well, it just sort of like goes down the back of here, but there's nothing totally like sensible that would say is that's what it was uh, meant to be cooling. Okay. We have that, we have that. And this is the board. And this is this is bent. Yeah, you can clearly see that it's bent downwards that way. I can see it definitely on the on the bench. But it's only by a few millimeters. It's not highly bent. Let's get under the microscope and have a look and see if we can figure out where these inductors are that he was talking about. First of all then, because I'm just by the GPU, let's just make sure nobody's been at this with a hot air gun. And it, well, I don't think it's bubbled. A little bit of a wipe over. Mm, yeah, that looks okay. That looks okay. Don't see any obvious like broken capacitors. Let me just get the focus on a bit better. That looks worse. Yeah, it's there. I look down the microscope as well. It's easier for me to do it this way. That looks okay. Just looking across uh, for these ferrites. So th this is where the, the, the 12 volts coming in here. So if there's any broken ferrites on the 12 volts, he said. Did you expect to see something here? This all looks so far okay. I mean, unless he means on the 12 volts, you know, at the uh, other connector, the PCIe 6 8 way connectors, maybe. Well, let's just uh, get a look around this board first. So, nothing much to see in this area. The RAM chips. I mean, there's like lots of capacitors that are not fitty, but there's nothing particularly. 
strange about that. These, <laughs> these tantal capacitors are not like the straightest mounting thing we've ever seen. Look at this. Yeah, it's like somebody's throwing them onto the board. Okay. But I don't see any particular signs that anybody's desoldered and resold them. I think that's just how they made them. This must be a Friday afternoon job, this card. Uh, anything here? No, that looks nothing obvious. Hmm, these are uh, funny looking things, aren't they? It says they're resistors. Yeah. But that one says diode, but that one also says resistor. Do you know? Anybody know what they are? Oops. Okay, so here's the 12 volt. Ah, oh, now there's obviously. Is there something missing from there? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think it's just how it is. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at the other side of the board. So, this is kind of like the, the back of the uh, one of some connector here. I'm not really sure what. It's not where the 12 volt comes in. This is where the 12 volt comes in. And this looks, well, I don't see anything obvious. I don't see any broken ferrites that they're referring to. If they are, they're not easy to spot. So, uh, damaged transistor. Or just like a little scratch. Oh, it looks like, uh, let me see if you can see some focus on the uh, screen. Yeah, you're pretty good, aren't you? That's a little bit suspicious. This this one here, was it just something stuck to it? No, it's something stuck to it. It comes off, yeah. Whatever it is, it comes off. Okay. Not so suspicious. But it's the sort of thing you should be looking for. It looks okay down there. Okay, let's just check the focus because I'm getting higher up the board because of the rear bracket. And then let's uh, just make sure it's good. There we go. Quite a highly populated board, I'll say that, say that much about it. Lots of stuff on it, yeah. Lots of stuff. Okay. Nothing much in this area. And this area just seems like lots and lots of space for capacitors that are not fitting by the looks of it. It's like you know, there's a lot of room. Oh, is it like a block of them here, but <laughs> nowhere else, yeah. It's just like. Empty plots basically, yeah. Let's, let's get out a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, more quickie capacitors. <laughs> They're everywhere on this, aren't they? It's a Friday afternoon job, this thing. You'd think for what this cost that you could actually get the capacitors straight. I mean, I know these are here, are supposed to be at an angle, but yeah. <laughs> I think you take my point though, yeah. I think you take my point. Let's focus again. There we go. More brick, drunken bricklayer capacitors, yeah. Are we getting near the other end of the board now? Oh, and that's just a bit of silk screen marking, actually. Sadly. Yeah. Whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be there. 
Oh, it's just a bit of reflection actually, it doesn't do anything. As I tilt the board, you, is it actually it moves? Yeah, it's just a reflection. Okay. And we basically at this end of the board now. So after several minutes of uh, nosing around this, I don't really see anything. Uh, next thing then is going to be measure some resistances on it. We have there 12 volts coming in. So we go to the ground, 12 volts. And that looks, yeah, two or three kilograms, that's normal. 3.3 volts, a few hundred ohms, a couple hundred ohms or something, let's see. No, actually very high. One, two, three. Well, that's particularly high actually. Um, then we have on the other side of the board, I'm still on the same ground point. One side will be connecting to ground and one set will be reading, well, in, in the kilograms, I'd imagine. Yeah, there. And underneath is going to be ground. Do we have a ground? Yeah, ground. Unlike the last car, I looked at if you saw that video. Yeah, ground ground so there's no shorts on the 12 volts coming in on either connector there's no problem on the 3.3 coming in the pop it looks rather unusually high resistance one two three four I, mean, I don't know these cards but that's normally in the range of a couple hundred ohms two to four hundred ohms something like that hmm that's interesting let's have a look on the various inductor coils sum up You'll probably find that some of them are just connected to the 12 volts, like filters. That's reading one meg. Is that one connecting to the 3.3? No. It was just a similar reading, that was all. About 2k, 2.5. Okay, 8.6. Well, that's probably something like PEX or one of those sorts of buys. high what about on the other side of the board well not the other side but across this end of the board we have again core cool, which you expect to be very low oh ah that's probably cool so ah uh, okay so these two here are going to be memory controller or, or RAM by the looks of it yeah this is core we have one two three four five six seven eight phases yeah and you expect that to be very low anyway then we have uh, a couple of small ones here killer ohms killer ohms I mean the small ones you expect them to be in the killer ohms because these small so they're obviously not generating much current this one, high, it's mega ohms. One here, kilo ohms, kilo ohms. This is a bigger one. It's still in the kilo ohms though. So that's all the ones I can see on this side of the board. I don't spot any obvious uh, LDO, low dropout linear regulators. Here's the other side. So I can look. I didn't notice anything when I was looking around under the microscope. I wasn't particularly looking for these. But no, I don't see any LDOs on that side either. So I think the next thing to do with this is going to be to power it up and see what it does. The only thing I can find I think it's a little bit strange so far is the high resistance on the 3.3, which just surprised me how high that actually was. Six, five mega ohms. It's dropping now, but well, that's something's charging up in the opposite direction. But still high. And the one that I thought might be PEX, 7.8. But that isn't unusual though, for modern cards anyway. Let's get some power out and let's see what we've got. Just while I'm getting all the cables out, I just thought I'd mention the model numbers. This is a GV N28 TWF388 gig. Yeah, so it's an 8 gig about 2080, RTX 2080. Hmm, so I'm not having much luck identifying this part at the moment. So 
let's shelve that for now. We'll just keep in mind that we know it isn't running. Let's put the heatsink back on this with some thermal compound and let's power it up and let's see what this card actually does. There it is, I've put the uh, heatsink back on it, put some uh, MX4 compound on it as well. So let's uh, power it up. So we should get to the uh, BIOS screen. So we can just check that first. Got a bleep. Yeah, you probably saw, but you'll probably hear me hit, hit the microphone, but. Clearly now it's asking for a boot device, so it is giving us a picture. Let's uh, connect the hard disk and see what happens. Okay, I have a little, uh, this thing, Corsair Force 60 gigabyte SSD, which I found on an old PC. And to be quite honest, I mean, they're pretty useless for using as a PC, I guess, with such a small... Hard drive. I mean, you can install Windows 10 on it, but they're great for this sort of uh, work for testing graphics cards because if you mess it up, or rather when you mess it up, it's pretty easy to just uh, and quick to just reinstall Windows on there. And uh, there's enough room on there for Windows 10 and any test programs you need to test graphics cards, that's for sure. So let's attach that to the rig and let's see if it now will boot into Windows. Yeah, we've got a bleep, splash screen, and it is loading, you can see. All right, I'll let that load up and then let's see what we've got. Well, being an SSD, that's what we've got. I didn't even pause the video, yeah? So we're getting into Windows. What I need to do now is load the latest drivers for this graphics card and see what it does. Well, I'm just downloading the driver and I've almost... Uh, completed it now but during the installation the screen kind of like glitched and went blank and then came on and said higher resolution I think so it looks like it's actually gone and downloaded the driver itself while I was downloading this one at that point it looks like the fans stopped running I'm not sure if that's normal but the PC is still working so I think we can just go ahead now and actually uh, install the, uh, the driver this is the latest version on the gigabyte website for this actual card which is a wind force 8 gig there may well be later drivers on the nvidia side but let's put the one on from the geforce side and let's see what it actually does of course this will take a little while i'll report back if something happens or otherwise well it turns out actually that i already have drivers installed it kind of like stuck there for quite a while saying it was you know looking for compatible hardware and i just right clicked on the um screen and went to nvidia control panel which was there and it opened up but then the store said it couldn't install on this version of windows so it might just be that i already have a driver installed this one's 456.71 again i'm not sure that's the latest driver but let's uh, have a look to see what the computer is doing. Let's try run the uh, Heaven Benchmark. Okay, so I've just opened up the Heaven Benchmark. Let's see what it does. It's opened up very quickly, so that's usually a good sign. The mouse run. Okay. Sorry, this camera's flashy a bit. I just put my hand over it like that, it stops, but I have no idea why. There's no settings I can see anything to do with background level or something stupid. Going. So, we are running. So, so far, this graphics card seems to be working. The fans are not running at the moment. Let's wait while it warms up a bit and see what it does. And that's what it does. It stopped. Oh, did it stop? Well, I've not crashed. I have a mouse pointer on the screen. 
No, it didn't stop. It's come back again. Maybe, maybe I need to tell it to run continuous. I'm not really quite sure. Let's try thermal. It's like, oh, I think something's gone wrong. It seems to be like this is eventually is crashed. Yeah. Let's restart the PC. Now, something's happened here. I can't click on anything. Yeah, I can move the maps, but I can't actually click on anything. Try the three fingered solid. And restart the PC. I always like it's trying to do an update as well, so I tell it to do the update and restart. Windows did some big update. Um, the graphics card, when the PC restarted, restarted with the fans running, the fans switched off again. Let's run this again and see whether it was more just the fact that Windows stopped the program, maybe. It didn't kind of crash quite in the way I would expect a faulty graphics card to do, but of course, <laughs> anything's possible, yeah? So, <laughs> let's um, run it again, if it does run, and see if it works. Yeah, it's done that bit. Yeah, it's running. Okay, let's run that and see this time if it keeps on running. If, if it does, I'll give it 30 minutes, 60 minutes. But I won't make you guys watch all of I'm not sure how far it got last time before it crashed, so um, we'll have to uh, see if I sort of spot where it jumped out last time or not. Well, the fans have come back on on their own this time, so that's a good sign. It's obviously got control of the fans. So I think now I'll leave it running for a while and I'll come back to you guys if anything untoward happens or even if it's still working. Well, it went for a few more minutes and then the PC just reset on its own. Nothing crashed on the picture, it just reset. Um, so let's see what we can do with Firmox, see if what this is doing. Well, this seems to think there's something wrong with the driver. You know what, guys? I'm going to get the latest driver from NVIDIA and install it and then see what happens. Okay, I've installed the latest uh, driver, which I can find, 512.95. So let's see what this does. Again, we'll go over to uh, heaven, I think. And see how long this wants to run now. Okay, so uh, that came straight up like so. Run. Yeah. Let's wait for the uh, dragon to paint himself in. Yep, there he goes. He's attached it himself and off we go. Let's see how long it runs for this time. Okay, so that's still running. It's run all the way through now and it's still going. So I'll give this a good run, but it looks like the installation of the latest driver has stopped that occasional crashing. But I guess time will tell. Let's leave it running. I'll be back to let you know soon. Okay, guys, so it's much, much later and it's still running. So I've had this running for about 45 minutes now. So it would appear that in this case, it was a problem with the drivers. I have here a GTX 780 Ti, 3GB, that I bought off eBay as 40 a little while ago. But it went to the address in the UK. I seem to recall buying this because I was repairing another one at the time and there were some missing parts or something. But if I get another one, I can kind of work out what's wrong with the first one. And this went to my mother in law's address in the UK and sat there till the wife went over to the UK a little while ago. And in the meantime, I fixed the other one. Oh, so uh, let's see what's happening with this i'm pretty sure it was identical pretty much to the one i was working on 
So this has uh, all the original packaging. And yeah, this looks like a, another car that looked at a while ago. So as I say, Zotac GTX 780 Ti, OC, 3 gigabytes. Well, we've got it now, haven't we? It's here, so let's uh, start with the usual, which is a visual check, and then we'll go on to resistance checks and see where we go from there. Okay, I've pulled the ATX into the power. Now let's see what happens. Switch the power supply on. Take the cover limiter out. Does it start? Yes. Have we got any vehicle? Yes. So this card is effectively powering up. Because I didn't hear any bleeps. Oh, and I got a bleep. After a little while. That might be faulty RAM on the card. But bear in mind this motherboard also has onboard video. So let's see what we got. V cores effectively 9.9 of .9 a volt. RAM is 1.63, is that a bit high? Um, we have a voltage rail over here, 3.3. We have the one down there I thought that might be PEX, one, yeah, I'll go with that being PEX. We have this I thought, I thought was a filter, 12 volts, yes. And just at the back of the card we have uh, 12 volts. We have 12 volts. And one little one rise at the back. Five. Okay, so apart from the fact I don't get a picture coming out of it, it did bleep. But it's possible it didn't detect. Let's uh, check something we didn't check earlier. So I'll switch the power supply off. Just disconnect the leads. Okay. What I didn't check earlier was the first PCIe lane coming in, if that reads okay. So let's do that now. I'll just zoom down and you can actually see it. So the first PCIe lane on this side is three and four. We need to go to diode mode. And we need to get the meter into shot where you can see it there. So I'm on diode mode. And we're just going to check to ground. So pin three. 0.699, that's how it should read. And pin 4, yeah, seven, well, slightly different. They're usually the same. Uh, 724, 700. They're slightly different, which is a bit unusual. They're clearly not connected to each other, which they shouldn't be, because they read different. But on the other side, so on this side, it's pins 2 and 3, and this is your ref clock, your reference clock signal for the PCIe. So, this needs to be working for any data transmission to occur between the computer and the card. 0.95, 0 0.936, slightly different again from each other. And they're not shorted together. So, there's no obvious problems there. This normally goes wrong when you use a single channel mining adapter and you insert this thing into the computer the wrong way around and you send three volts 3.3 volts straight up into into here basically which goes to the GPU but the GPU doesn't like it yeah so that's what we have I think what we'll try now is we'll try to boot off Linux USB and see whether we can actually detect the card one thing I did just note is putting it back together to test it is that two of the screws are black and two of the screws of silver colored so they like two of them obviously not the original ones i would think which pretty much says somebody's been looking at this before i do love trying to fix stuff as people looked at before let's see if we can fix this one yeah okay it's in the pc i'll just set powers on let's just see if we get to the bios first i've connected it to the uh on board video and to the graphics card actually yeah, I'm in the BIOS. So what I'm going to do in here now, if we can just make the screen a bit bigger for you guys. Yeah, you can kind of see that now, can't you? So 
What I'm going to do in here is set the integrated graphics to be the primary display. So let's have a look what we just get into there. So this will depend on your BIOS, but peripherals, initial display output is saying PCIe 1, and I want to set that to integrated. So I can get a picture from Linux and see if it's going to detect our graphics card. So we'll save and exit that. And I'm booting from the uh, King's Overkill hard drive, the one we made on a previous video. And I'll link that to this one. So we're at the command prompt. I just tapped enter. Now, with the King's Overkill software, if you set your graphics card, the one you're working on, the GPU you're trying to repair, to be the primary display, then you will see a menu when this boots up asking you which type of graphics card you want to test, you can run the test. The problem is that when the GPU is not giving any video output, like ours isn't, then you can't do that. So when you have that situation, which I have, what you need to do is use a motherboard with onboard VGA, integrated graphics. And this motherboard has that. You, if you don't have one, you'll need to get one for this sort of diagnostic work. So in the BIOS, you'll need to set the integrated graphics to be enabled, and you'll have to set the integrated graphics to be the primary display, the secondary display being PCIe 16 slot 1. Okay, so that's what I've done. So I've seen an image and I get the prompt. So from here, we can now have a look on the drive. So LS, which is a list command on Linux, is listing the various folders. These are all folders or directories we see on the drive. And we're going to use the GTX 780. So to get there, it's CD for change directory, space, GTX 780. And we're now in that directory. You'll probably see the actual prompt has changed the name of the directory so you know where you are. And again, we can type LS and we can list all the various programs in here. So the blue colored ones were folders, and the green ones, these are effectively files or programs, commands. And I'm sure you can see here we have mats and we have mods. Mats is a test program for NVIDIA graphics cards to test memory. So we can try and run that. Now, because we are booting from the integrated graphics, we need to tell mats which card to test because it won't test the integrated graphics, it'll say invalid register. So to do that, we have to find our GPU under test. So let's see if it's there. So we type LS for list, if you like, LS PCI, list PCI. Hit enter, and this is giving us a list of all the PCI devices. I'm sure you can see here, NVIDIA Corporation GTX 780. So it's seeing the card, it's there. That's a good sign. If you can't see the card on Windows and you can't see the card on Linux, the chances are that memory is not the fault. You'll also see down this first column a load of numbers. And as I understand it, the first number is the index of that device. So at index 1, we have the VGA compatible controller and the NVIDIA audio device. Okay, so index one is our card, and we need to tell Mats to test the card at index one, and that's quite easy. So we go Mats, and to put the index in, it's minus n. So we go minus n, so it's an f, minus n space one. So we say run Mats at index one, and then how much memory do you want to test? Which is minus e is the amount of memory, and we're going to put in here ten megabytes. So let's run that and see what happens. Well, we've tried to run that, and you can see it's running on card with index one, but it's saying that the memory cycle enable bit in the PCI configuration space is turned off. That's actually because the card isn't initialized, and that is normal. And what we need to do is initialize the card. To do that, we run mods. So mods. And then GPU test dot js. And then the argument minus or dash OQA. That's a letter O, lowercase, not a zero, by the way. OQA. Enter. That has now initialized our 
graphics card. It says fail. But that's fairly normal. That's not a memory test. And I'm not too concerned at the moment we have a fail at this point. Mods detected assertion failure. I could look that one up. But what I can actually do now is run mats because the card's initialized. Or I should be able to. So save type is all good. If I press the up arrow a couple of times, we're back to the command. Mats index one, 10 megabit meg 10 megabytes. Okay, let's run the test. It's now running. Yeah, it's now running. We don't have the error about the right bit. Let's see what happens. Won't take too long. No, not even long enough to talk about the weather. There you go. Pass. So it's run the memory test and we have a pass. So this is telling us that RAM is not the fault on this graphics card. But we do know that we don't get any image out of it. So let's now try boot into Windows using the integrated graphics as a primary display. And let's see if our GPU will actually detect in Windows as well. I've booted into Windows. I'm in the device manager. I can actually see the uh, graphics card. I'm getting the video from the onboard VGA at the moment. So that's effectively a secondary display. So it is there. It seems to think there's no uh, problem with it. Uh, this device is working properly. So I wonder if the problem here is something to do with the video output connection on the graphics card rather than a problem with the, you know, the GPU itself, unless there's a problem with the interface to the HDMI or something like that. I mean, that does come from the GPU. It's even running using the graphics card with the onboard display. It must be using the graphics card to get that sort of uh, performance out of Unity in heaven. I wonder if I run Fairmark as well. I yeah, said so it's 1920 by 1080. I can't for one moment think that is using the onboard Intel graphics working that well. Yeah, Fairmark's running too as well on the GTX 780. Seems to be running okay, averaging 120 frames a second. But again, using the connection from the onboard VGA. Let's uh, just let this complete running, and then we'll try uh, using the onboard. Sorry, using the video output on the graphics card itself. This is quite interesting actually so i'm now connecting via the hdmi and i do get to a windows desktop but the machine then seems to lock up i'm not getting any mouse pointer can i open the windows menu no it's not it's relaxing to the the caps lock is working on the keyboard but i seem to have some problem with the display the windows key is not working let me try now with the um, DVI connector on the graphics card. So I can actually get out of here with a three-fingered salute. Well, I'll get a black screen. At this point, I guess I'm just going to have to hold the button in and restart it. Okay, machine's off. Let me go to the, um, put the um, DVI cable on the graphics card. Okay, so I've now uh, connected the DVI cable. Sorry if I bumped into the microphone then at one moment. So let's see what it does now. We'll switch it back on again. We'll boot it again. And let's see. I have to change my monitor to DVI, I guess. DVI. See if it boots up. Yeah, we see the loading screen. And now we have icons. That is really, really strange, but that is obviously the problem with this uh, graphics card. Let's now run the benchmark. 
So it appears that the guy who sold me this on eBay as faulty as either using the display port, and I don't have a suitable monitor to connect to that, or they're using the HDMI. Yeah, see on DVI it works fine. But it gives a picture on HDMI, it's not like, you can say like, you know, it's a broken connection somewhere, bad solid on the HDMI uh, socket. I'm kind of tempted <laughs> to keep this for myself actually, and one of my PCs upgraded, uh, one of my, uh, the one I use for playing older XP games, that has a 750 Ti, I don't know, they just use the DVI connector to be quite honest. But let's have a look to see if we can see anything obvious as to why it's doing what it's doing with the HDMI plugged into it. I'll just come out of there, let's just, uh, quit this and then we'll run firm off again. Okay, let's go. Let's run firm off again. That can go. Uh, that can run. Go. Yeah, firm off's running fine. Mine's about 76 frames per second. Sorry, it's off the screen. About 76 frames per second that. Uh, 1080 temperatures just leveling out quite nicely down there so i'm quite happy this graphics card is working there's just something very strange going on with the hdmi connection we'll just let it actually uh, finish yeah 60 percent now it's mostly there and the temperatures behaving quite fine to be quite honest obviously the mx4 arctic thermal compound is doing the job nicely okay and then we'll have a look to see if we can see anything stupid like bad connection around the uh, hdmi connector on this uh, graphics card yeah there we go completed so this is the uh, hdmi uh, connector I'll just zoom in a bit on this and then probably have to also focus slightly as well. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. But I don't see any damaged pins. It's a little bit dusty down here. So I'll get some isopropyl and I'll give this a clean. But I actually can't imagine that a problem here would cause it to do what it's doing when it's trying to load windows. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me that you would effectively you know you don't get any icons on the windows desktop and then you don't get a mouse pointer but it's obviously loaded windows it must crash at some point uh, all right let's just give that a bit of a clean That's definitely nice and clean now. I'll put this back together and let's give it another go with the HDMI cable and see if that actually made any difference. Well, strangely enough, I'm now on the uh, HDMI connector and I actually went straight into Windows and I have icons. Let's see if it works. Again, we're on Heaven Benchmark. Run. Oh, so far so good. This works. I, I have to say I don't believe it. It's like remarkable that that would have been the cause of the problem. Yeah, it's running. It's running. I'm going to put this uh, card into one of my PCs at home. So I have a few retro gaming mics. But I have one that perhaps you wouldn't really call retro gaming, but I play XP era games and early like Windows 7 era. So it's a it's an i7 2600K overclocked, 16 gig of RAM. At the moment, it has um, a GTX 750 Ti in there, which is an ideal card for playing 
XP era games. But the 780 Ti would be an even more ideal card for that machine. So I'm going to put this card in there and see if it then runs reliably. So I'll have this for quite a while, which means I'll be able to give you guys updates. And I'll probably, at the moment, playing games more on that machine than on the older setups I have, the retro gaming rigs, or for that matter, the newer one. Okay, so we seem to have got a rather unexpected repair out of that one. So as a final test, we'll just run um, Fairmark again at uh, 1080 preset, as I did previously, but now on HDMI cable. Yeah, and we have, yeah, we have the same, as I'd expect, same frames per second as we had before. So that looks good as well. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, a little bit unusual. Uh, let's hear from you in the comments below, especially how did that apparently repair the problem on this card? And what you thought of the other one, to be quite honest, as well. I mean, I think I just proved that sometimes it's not really a fault. It's just driver-related. But I'm sure there's something to learn there. Because I think sometimes we forget to try the obvious, you know, when we go down the rabbit hole with the stuff we didn't need to do yeah <laughs> i mean i i certainly do that from time to time and with this one yeah i think that was a good demonstration of how to use the ram test software as well okay guys that's the end of that one and i'll see you all soon on another learn electronics repair video ciao for now guys